I wonder if I still have my helmet somewhere. She made a Darth Vader helmet out of a bucket. You still have your Darth Vader helmet. I want to find it and show it. But I don't know where it is. It's probably in my closet. And I am really hoping somebody threw it out. No, we I did think not. Really we would hoping. never I don't think throw we it did. out. Yeah, yeah, I believe you're probably right. But I'm still <laughs> really hoping somebody threw it out. See? Hey, everyone. It's Lori, and I'm here with Eva and Charlotte today. And we are doing 25 bookish things about us. Now, I guess maybe this was a tag once upon a time. I don't know, but I know lots of people have done this and it sounded like fun. And since 25 bookish things is a lot to get to, I'm bringing these two in so I only have to come up with about 10 instead of 25. So we'll get started. On Hogwarts sorting quizzes, I am a Hufflepuff. I'm all sorts of everything. I've never taken the Pottermore quiz, so I don't have the accurate source of information or whatever. But I've taken about five bazillion on Scratch. And yeah, I think I've come up with every Hogwarts house. But I like to say I'm a Hufflepuff. So everyone who knows you says you're a Hufflepuff too. <laughs> um, I would love to be a Hufflepuff. I want to be known for my kindness and my lovingness, and that's just not how it goes. Um, I'm a reluctant Ravenclaw. Um, when I read a book, I like to pretend that I am my favorite character, and I like to come up with my own decisions. So when the character does something that I wouldn't do, I'm like, nah, -uh, that's not how it works. I've written some parodies and some of them are books related. And one of the ones that I remember um, most vividly, we did a music video of, and it was really awful, but it was a parody of Starships where it was broomsticks. Mm -hmm. So it was all about a Quidditch match. That kept them busy for a couple of days. It was nice. <laughs> okay, I fall asleep to audiobooks every night. So, I am very picky about narrators for audiobooks, and I can't listen to a new audiobook when falling asleep at night because then I might not remember what happened because I may have fallen asleep to it. So, most of the time, I fall asleep to the Harry Potter audiobooks, so I have all of them. We rotate through them. My poor husband gets to listen to Harry Potter almost every night, too. Uh, sometimes we listen to the Chronicles of Narnia just for a change of pace, but the narrators are a little less consistent on those, so there's several I just don't like in there. So I don't like to listen to those. When I read, um, I like to read my favorite quotes aloud to the people in the same room as me. But this is a problem because when I'm reading, it's usually in the evening and everyone's in the same room as me and everyone's reading their own book and they don't want to hear about my book. They just want to read their book. So we have a lot of issues with that. Even when we listen to an audiobook and I don't really want to be listening to it and I want to be reading a different book. I still get mad when Charlotte reads a different book while listening to an audiobook. Because she'll, she'll say she's read the book, or the audiobook, but she hasn't because she's been reading another book all the way through. Yeah, I don't think you can read two books at one time. Book statistics for our household. Um... We have 121 books in our Audible library at the moment, and 12 more credits. So lots of audiobooks. I also looked in uh, my Kindle sort of section. Now some of these are library books that got returned, so it's not as bad as it sounds. But then again, I also have books on my Kindle that I got off Project Gutenberg, so they don't show up in my Kindle library on Amazon, but it said 419. Uh, 
a while back, we um, were in a video chat with a bunch of other homeschoolers, I believe. Yeah, they didn't have to be homeschoolers, but it was um, a group, a Facebook book group that I've been in for a number of years. Had a opportunity, if you supported a Kickstarter for a book, to have a live author event, but because we were all over the country, we did it as a video chat. So we got to digit, di digitally meet S.D. Smith, the author of um, The Green Ember series. Yes. What was the best thing about that? Um, I liked seeing other people's fan art and hearing about their favorite parts. Um, sometimes we didn't get to hear their favorite parts because their favorite parts were things that someone else hadn't read yet and they didn't want to spoil it but I don't think I was the biggest fan of those books at the time we had the book chat so it's kind of sad that now that I like them more we can't do it but the thing I remember most was being grouchy that I hadn't thought of making fan art for it so <laughs> and S.D. Smith was very gracious and he did a great job of answering questions from a lot of kids and <sighs> He, he, I think he had a fun time interacting with the group of kids, too. So that was neat. I can't handle a lot of talking or noise when I'm reading, for the most part. Like, if it's a really funny book, I can sometimes keep my attention. But if it's, like, slow or kind of boring, I can't handle being in the same room as people talking very well. School is kind of hard that way for me. <laughs> I currently have five library cards in my purse. To be fair, it's not all my fault. Two of them are my library cards. Two of them are Charlotte's library cards. And one of them is Eva's library card. <laughs> On library cards, I think all of us except Charlotte have pretty easy to memorize um, library card numbers for our home library, so I've had it memorized since like, I, okay, I can't, it. yeah, I can't remember using it, it very much in card form after I got it. Yeah. Our local library doesn't require you to have your library card, so I never actually drag library cards out <laughs> when we go there, um, but they just either know your number because it's a really small town. They really? ask you your number or they just type your name into the system and your number comes up. So our library cards have recently expanded to much, much longer at that library because it's recently become part of a bigger library system type thing, but they really only need the last couple numbers. So my number is 2121. <laughs> 3739. 3300, which might be the easiest one ever. I remember getting my library card. The cool thing about our library is they take you on a tour of the library when you get your card because it's a historic site. So it's in a historic house. So that's pretty cool. Hey, I really like to rescue books from thrift stores and from book sales. I like to think of it as rescuing because if I don't take the books home, they might get thrown in the trash or turned into a craft project by a crazy person like my mother-in-law who likes to cut up books in her spare time. True or false? True. True, but it's but not necessarily not really crazy, crazy person. If they're really awful books, like, who wouldn't want to cut them up? Or if they're falling apart. See, I don't rescue the terrible books. <laughs> I rescue the good books to prevent them from being turned into craft projects. <laughs> And basically so they can have a home, because, you know, sad, lonely books. Um, because of this habit, and because when I'm buying books, I buy for the whole family, and everybody has kind of different bookish tastes, I um, have a little bit of a bad habit of accidentally rescuing the same books over and over again. So... I don't know how many copies of My Antonia we have in our house. I think we're up to three, but it might be more. There's at least two physical copies, a Kindle copy, and I think we have it on Audible, too. <laughs> um, so, minimum of four. 
I also apparently rescued the Red Pony by John Steinbeck twice. <laughs> um, and uh, Indian Captive, I had two copies of that for a while. That was for school. I don't know how I doubled that for school. Um, sometimes I do it intentionally, and these two think I didn't do it intentionally. So um, we have a hardcover Lord of the Rings, paperback copies of Lord of the Rings, all the Lord of the Rings on Audible. That was intentional. I really, unlike Mom, hate looking through thrift store bookshelves or bookshelves that are unorganized like them or alphabetized because if I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, I do not want to look through all of these authors that I'm never in a million years going to read or all of these books that I'm never in a million years going to read. So I like it when they are a nice set subject that I do like to read most of the books in it. So like, um, I really like to read um, nonfiction books with lots of pictures. <laughs> so I like the junior nonfiction and I can just go through that section and I'll really like it. But mm. we differ on opinions <laughs> in this because Eva hates browsing. I love browsing. I love browsing browse is where too. I find the books that I read. I only like browsing um, new releases, really, or um, like displays the library has put out. But there's just nothing better than like walking down and just <laughs> randomly looking at just books in whatever section of the library or bookstore and seeing what catches your interest. And picking no. up something you never knew existed. You can do that with a um, nice small collection that the library has chosen for no. you to look at. No, you can't. I, I do like picking up display books. <laughs> I tried to prevent double buying books by putting all of our physical books into library thing. I bought a lifetime subscription so that I could buy... <laughs> Did you know that? No, yes, I did not know that. Fun fact, I paid 25 bucks to library thing so that I could add as many books as I wanted because when I first started using it, I got to the limit. I was like, there's a limit to the number of books you can put in this thing? So, um, so anyway, I tried to put them in. There's some books in the house that I know aren't in there right now because I just bought a set of five books at church on Sunday. I thought might be the only ones. Um, but at the moment, we have 1,581 physical books in our house. Oh, in library thing. That doesn't <laughs> count books that I have on a special books shelf that's for paperback swap where we probably have another couple hundred. <laughs> Yeah, trying to find something so that she can paperback swap it is a nightmare. <laughs> That's true. I really love depressing books. It's just... A family trait. Yeah. Um, we are... We have this class with a couple of other students on writing. And uh, the teacher thinks I'm very sweet and very nice, and she might be a little mistaken on that. Um, but she thought that I would like, like, really happy books, and really, like, kind of boring books, in my opinion. But, um, then we were trying to find a book that I could, could critique, and she was asking me what my favorite books were, and I answered, oh, The Hunger Games, The Lord of the Rings, Narnia, that's not very really depressing. Um, the Giver Quartet, is it? Is it? Yes. Quartet. Quartet. <laughs> um, it's behind us. <laughs> I guess you can't really see it, because I've got my Italian book and my hair <laughs> in the way. Um... And I just kept listing some books that were kind of depressing. And she just looked so surprised. I have some unpopular opinions in this household on books. So sometimes I don't especially like books that aren't very riveting or have a lot of like descriptions, over descriptions. I do like the Anne books weirdly enough, but I do not like the Lord of the Rings particularly. That's so wrong. So maybe if I read them again sometime, I'd like them better, but they're just so long, I'm like, 
why. You should probably listen to the audiobooks again. Yeah, probably. Because the audiobooks are really well done. Yeah. I also sometimes get sort of tired of British narrators. And <laughs> shame! <laughs> but then again, I listen to, like, a female narrator with an American accent, and I'm just like, why? This sounds so wrong, because I've grown up with British male narrators all the time. I will admit that I have a thing for British male <laughs> narrators, because I... There are very few female narrators that I have enjoyed. There's a few. But American men are also a problem. Like, <laughs> you have to be British to narrate a book, apparently. I don't know. Or have a British accent. Well, I guess part of it is, like, it doesn't bother me. If the book is set in America, like, it would be weird to have a book set in America and have a British accent, so I can tolerate that more, but I don't mind if you throw a British accent into a random fantasy novel because it's set in some alternate world somewhere. That, that works for me. They should sound British. I have had library cards in seven different library districts in my life. I have lived in, I think, less than that. <laughs> like, okay, so the first 19 years of my life, I lived in one place. Yeah. I, I think I've had library cards in more cities than I've actually lived in. And you also got your first library card when you were four. I had to learn to write my name so I could get my own library card. I had that library card until, like, I might still have it somewhere. It's hard to tell. I don't think they'd still accept it at that library since it's been a bit. <laughs> but I at least had it through high school graduation. <laughs> my handwriting on my library card is kind of painful. It's not like chicken scratch. It's actually very well written, but it looks like I spent like five minutes writing my name, which I'm pretty sure I spent close to five minutes writing my name. On the contrary, mine I spent 30 seconds on, and the it C shows. in my name looks like a G, and it just gets worse from there. <laughs> When I hear sounds while I'm reading, I remember that particular scene that I'm reading during the song. So, with the King Chronicles, um, the last book, the last scene, I was reading, and the song Shut Up and Dance came on, and it just fit that scene so well that I remembered it for, like, five years. We've both had... Hogwarts birthdays for our 11th birthday. Yep. Um, and I made my sister an Overmorny acceptance letter. Yeah. And, and she a also made me a howler. A howler, yes. And their grandma is a very good cake decorator, so they like to challenge her with <laughs> difficult um, cakes. So yours was a golden snitch, is that right, Eva? Yeah, maybe. I think Eva's was a golden snitch, and was I think Charlotte's might have been the monster book of monsters. Yes, it was. Yeah. But, you know, we've also made her do Death Star cakes and other nerd-related things over the years. Oh, and Hunger Games. Yes, that was um, the last, last, um, yeah, my last Charlotte's birthday. Charlotte's last birthday was Hunger Games. and um, It's disturbing some of the cakes you can find on Pinterest that are Hunger Games-related. Hi! Um... Yeah, we're recording. Do you want to come say hi? You're like, no, no. <laughs> no, I mean, we're just, like, I'll edit things out, so it's, it's not a problem. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're just doing 25 bookish things about us. Do you have any to add? I have a couple of stuff. Sorry. I, I was just asking oh, your dad okay. if you had any I'm for like, don't us. stop it yet. I wasn't stopping. Okay. We're just Cause I actually going on for 25 minutes. My sister and I like to cosplay sometimes so for halloween last year no yeah last year i was katniss and i was prim everding so and then we also have dressed up as hagrid and tonks, tonks. 
and... Hermione and Luna. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, let me think. Well, this isn't bookish. The book... Um, no, no, what was the name of that? Oh, 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 oh. You had the mustache. Yes, I was oh. Victor Getz. Yes, Victor Getz. And, and Scipio from, from the, the Thief Lord. The thief, I kept trying to say the book Funk. thief. The Thief Lord. Uh, Too many thieves. <laughs> and I kept that mask for, like, ever. I think I still have the mustache. <laughs> I can't wear it anymore because the stickiness dried up, but... Well, now my black mask has, like, rainbow paint splotch tape on it because it broke, so. Yeah. Yes. Perfectly natural. <laughs> we are the sort of family that dresses up like book characters every <laughs> Halloween. Oh, I like to draw a lot of bookish art, so, or art in general, but I've most recently drawn Prim and Rue. Yep. Like half prim, half rue. Yeah. I feel the flowers. And I spent searched... a lot of time researching um, the meaning of flowers. Yeah. So, um, primrose means can't live without you, and rue means grace or clear sightedness. Or regret. That's the more common one I found out. <laughs> one of the more recent times that we were in a thrift store looking at books, um, we were. Somewhere for a swim meet for Eva. Wasn't that when we were... Yeah. I think so. Yeah, so she was, <laughs> she was at a swim meet, and you know what swim meets, like, the kid you're watching competes for anywhere between 30 seconds and 5 minutes, and then you wait for the next event, which can be hours. So, um, Charlotte and I, and um, my mother-in-law, and one of my sister-in-laws decided to go do some shopping and we ended up at a Goodwill. I think it was Goodwill. So I went in first by myself um, and started looking at books and eventually everybody else joined me in there. But I apparently made an impression on the people around me looking at books because after I'd been there for a while, this random woman said, hey, book lady, where are the cookbooks? And sadly, I could tell her exactly where the cookbooks were located in the book department of this Goodwill that I had never been in before. I've attempted to write many books, but I haven't actually finished any of them. So have I. Um, one of the storylines that I had, um, Eva got really mad at me because it had been a few months. A few months before, she had told me that exact storyline that she wanted to write. And... I edited a few things, but it was... <laughs> so, yeah, I was really mad at the time, but now that I look back on it, I'm like, that wasn't a good storyline to begin with, so... Oh, well. She probably saved you the pain. A lot of people, like, have very, um, thought-out descriptions of characters in their heads, but I don't. It's very few times that I actually can, like, envision exactly what the character looks like, but... One of the books where I did envision things a little bit better was The Hunger Games. And it wasn't characters. The movie actually kind of changed my perspective on that. But it was Katniss's um, interview dress that was flames. Um, and it said something about, like, it was very heavy because it was all jewels in the book. So I had this entire picture painted out in my head. It's like... When she spins, it's going to look like the flames are moving because the jewels are arranged in a neat pattern. And it's like ball gown. Yeah, and it's like a ball gown. And then I watched the movie, and it's like what you would see on the red carpet or something, and it doesn't have any jewels on it. Except like S. Like maybe a few sparkles at yeah. the bottom. And then it literally bursts into flames. I'm like, come on. <laughs> we were kind of disgusted by basically all of her dresses in the movies. I liked some of them. The but... wedding dress. I just, no, that was too pop culture-y. You hmm. have quite strong opinions of this. <laughs> in the book, the wedding dress did burn away to the yes. dress yes. underneath, so, you know. I yeah. was okay with it. I, I liked I, the wedding dress one. Yeah. I also don't visualize very well, so, um, yeah, sometimes I don't have a very good 
picture in my head of characters. I visualize everything. Every single detail. With Charlotte in the center. (laughs) Okay. So, there were 25 bookish things about us. Um, If you related to any of them, let us know in the comments. I'd love to know if somebody else listens to audiobooks every night when they fall asleep or... um, has the the puts themselves in the center of everything problem or can't handle any noise while reading um but we hope you enjoyed this one and um we will be back some other time with something else hope you have a good day bye